Hey folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I'm sharing a pretty quick video, the first of my holiday series. We're going to be making some quilling paper bells. You can choose whatever color you wish. I am using this gold color from Lake City. This is called Gold Quill Trim Strips, which is kind of a funky name, but it's just a nice bright gold. You're also going to need some wire. This is 24 gauge gold wire. You can find that in the jewelry making section of your stores. Something to snip your wires and also something to curl your wires. Again, these tools can be found wherever you find jewelry making supplies. You're also going to need something to roll your quilling strips, whatever tool of your choice. I'm going to be using my automatic tool because these are going to be sort of large pieces and it's just easier that way. And also some white glue in a needle nose container if you have that. So to start, we are making, like I said, some bells for embellishing your holiday crafts. The finished bells are going to be about an inch long and that's going to be made up of three strips of paper. These are the 24 inch strips so I'm using three of those. If your strips are a different size by all means play with the sizing or do a little trial and error and figure out what works best for your craft. But anyway so I have my three strips of quilling paper. I tore off a little bit from both ends because remember quilling paper likes to stick better when there's a torn end as opposed to a cut end. And adding a little bit of glue to each one, we're going to stick these end to end. So we're making a very long continuous quilling paper strip. Stick the third one on, try to make these as even as possible and you really don't have to overlap very much at all. Just enough to get them to stay together. That should be good. And I'm going to start on one end and all I'm going to do is just roll this up into one really big tight coil. You can use, like I said, any quilling tool of your choice. I find when strips get this long, it's just easy to get them started on a battery operated tool. Um, mine doesn't like to do really, really, really big strips. So after I get it rolled as much as my tool can handle, I take it off and finish it by hand just like this. glue down the end to keep that shape secure and once that sets for a moment you can start molding your bells and this really couldn't be easier. All you're going to do is push gently into the middle from one side slowly. I'm using my fingers for this. They do make molds that you can use for quilling. I haven't made a video about using molds just yet, but if you'd like to see one, let me know in the comments and I will put one together if you have any questions about that. So I'm going around and around trying to make this as smooth as I can. You don't want to push too much because your coil will just kind of go out, but I just want this to be a nice smooth dome, something like that. Looks like a little thimble almost. And you could stop there, that would be fine, but I like to add a little bit of a lip to my bells. I think it makes it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just pushing back very gently on the bottom few layers, pushing them back together again so it has a little bit of a lip around the edge. And you want this shape to set, so you're gonna put some glue around the inside and brush it out. I think I forgot to mention you might want to grab a little paintbrush earlier. So if you have one of those, wipe it out and smooth all that glue out. If you don't have a paintbrush handy, you can use your finger. That will work just fine. And now we are ready to take your bell to the next level and we're going to add a little clapper to the inside. That's what would make the sound if this was a real working bell. So here I have about three or four inches of quilling paper and I'm going to roll it end to end. 
This time I'm just using my needle tool because just like my automatic tool doesn't like really big pieces, it doesn't like really small pieces either. So, you know, do what you gotta do. So I roll this all the way, keeping it on my tool, gluing the end down, and pretty much making the same shape as we did for the bell, just on a smaller scale. And that is what we're going to put inside here with a little bit of wire in the next step. So put that aside. We'll get back to that in a moment. So now you're going to take your wire and whatever snips you have to cut that. You don't need much, oops, you don't need much for these little bells. If you made bigger bells, you need a larger piece. And we're going to wrap one end around this tool. And you can see that these little clamps on the end are round. All you have to do is grab one end and turn it and you can make that little loop just like I made there. If you went higher on the tool, the loop would be bigger. We went pretty low on the tool so the loop is smaller. And I also like to give my loops just a little squeeze so they're not as bold on the bell. I find they stick out a little bit if you don't do that. And then all I did was thread my little clapper onto that wire and then put the other end into the hole at the top of the bell. And this next part is about as complicated as this little project gets. I wanted to be able to still see the clapper a little bit, but then I needed to trim off some of this extra. So I found that if I kind of held the clapper to the side of the bell where I wanted it, and then I had enough on the other end to trim and to turn and to turn the the part that was sticking out from the top with that tool again to make a little ring so it won't go back through the hole. And at this point you can even adjust it a little bit more if you want to make it a little bit smaller. And then your clapper will sort of dangle just like a real bell. It's a little difficult to film these, I realized as I was doing it. I couldn't hold it up so you can see how it was dangling at the same time, but I hope that this sort of makes sense. I made a few different sizes. The first one was made with two strips. This is the three strips, a little bit bigger with four. And then this one I made by gluing six of those 24 inch strips end to end. Each time the clapper got a little bit bigger because I just used a little bit longer strip to make the shape. If you wanted to go a little bit extra, by all means, start decorating the outside of these. If you look up quilling paper bells, there are some very extravagant bells out there that you might be inspired by. And you can make something similar by making some other shapes and gluing them to the outside of your bells. Now, as far as what you can do with these little bells, you can add them to any of your holiday quilling crafts. You can make some little evergreen sprigs. I have a video on that I will leave for you in the description for this video. Play around with maybe having some bells by those. I was just kind of playing at this point here. Uh, maybe you want to add some little berries somewhere around. You could use poinsettia flowers if you can figure out how to put those in there. I have a number of holiday type winter Christmas videos. I have a whole playlist for that and I'll make sure that I include that too so you can find all these videos. You can also, because these bells have that um, hanger at the top. We made that circle. So you can thread some little ribbon through there and make a bow that might tie your craft together. You know, this like always, this is just inspiration. You can take these little bells and you can think about anything you'd like to do with them. If you've ever seen people use quilling to make jewelry, especially earrings, very similar process right here. But some other ideas would be home decor items. You could add these to quilling wreaths. 
Um, I don't know if you saw my last video about using an embroidery hoop for a wreath. These would work really good kind of dangling from the inside of something like that, but more of a holiday feel. You could even just use them as their own for little mini ornaments or to put on top of presents. You guys are going to come up with some great ideas. Please tell me about them in the comments. I'll leave any links you need to supplies or other videos in the description box. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you can hear about the next video as soon as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.